Talk 1380 WAOK. Good morning. Good morning. It's time for the movement. Good afternoon, y'all. Are you down? Good evening. Are you down? Let's go. Are you down? Are you down? Are you down? Down, down. It's the movement. It's the movement. Are you down? News and Talk 1380 WAOK, the voice of the community. It's your brother, Dr. F. Keith Slaughter. I'm up in here get, get, getting it in from 7 to 10, exactly where I'm supposed to do it across from me. My DJ, DJ JD Smooth Criminal, in the place to be. And uh, it's a fan to see Friday. Because in your fantasy, you in charge of my show. So we talking about what you talking about today. Whatever it is you want to talk about, blow me up, 404-892-2703. We'll chop it up. And if you go to the group page of The Movement with Dr. F. Keith Slaughter on Facebook and put in your request as a fantasy DJ, if it's funky enough, we'll bump it. All right? But we ain't, pump, we ain't bumping. No half funky. It's got to be under the garbage can in the back of the alley, you know, where the little plug that let the juice out the garbage can is. It's got to be funky like that. You see what I'm saying? 404-892-2703 is the number. You know what? It's your show, but uh, I got a sister that has come through the door, and I'm going to let her get a little bit of y'all time today, if you don't mind. This sister is an individualized education program coach, a consultant, an author, a special needs sibling, wife, mother of four, and an educational empowerment speaker. Her passion for America's intellectually disabled youth is driven by firsthand experience, which is covered in a book that I have in my hand, Lost and Found. Ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers, put your hands together for my dear sister, Angela West Brown. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome, dear sister. Yes. You're welcome. You're the first person came up in here and strapped your pocketbook right here on the- Are you serious? (laughs) (laughs) You strapped your pocketbook on the chair. (laughs) <laughs> so it's like, uh, ain't nobody getting my pocketbook oh up in W. Okay. <laughs> four, it's four. a habit. It's just a habit. You got that thing strapped <laughs> up tight. I ain't mad at you. 404-892-2703. I haven't stolen much lately. Oh, my but, God. But uh, I ain't saying I won't. Uh, 404-892-2703. All right. The name of your book is Lost and Found, uh, Educating Parents of Intellectually Disabled High School Students on how to navigate through college, adulthood, and beyond. That's correct. This is this is heavyweight. Yes, it this is. This is heavyweight. Talk about how it is you came to write this particular text. Okay. So about 10 years ago, uh, my sister graduated from high school. She has intellectual disabilities. Mm-hmm. And she was supposed to start a program at um, Morris Brown. And as you know, Morris Brown... Um, they lost their accreditation, mm-hmm. and after that, there was no um, plans in place for her. Mm-hmm. Um, my grandmother was receiving SSI, which is at the federal level, mm-hmm. but then as I um, started to realize after I worked for DFACS, which is the um, Age-Blind Disability Services as a Medicaid eligibility, eligibility um, specialist, mm-hmm. I discovered that there were so, there were so many state um, benefits and waiver programs that my grandmother could have um, apply for if she knew about it, but she didn't know. My mm-hmm. grandmother did the best she could, um, and after um, my my sister just 
didn't have anything else in place. She just started running away and getting lost to the streets, hence the title Lost and Found. And from mm. there, it just began to be such a hard um, struggle for my family mm -hmm. because nobody really knew what to do. Nobody really was there to guide us and guide my grandmother's hand mm -hmm. on what her next step should have step should have been. Excuse mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, what I've decided to do um, after my sister ended up pregnant, um, and that was just such a hard, you know. It was hard for me and it was very it was a heartache type thing that my little sister, this is my baby sister, mm -hmm. you know, and there was nothing I could do. I felt helpless. Mm -hmm. And that's when everybody wanted to step in and say, OK, we'll help. We'll help now that this little baby is here. Mm -hmm. But I kept I had called out for help, you know, prior to the situation getting to the point that it was at. Right. Um, I reached out to legal services and they were telling me, OK. You know, it's only so much we can do. Um, I tried to get a power of attorney. There was nothing I could do there. I tried to reach out to different programs. And here's the kicker. Once your child gets 18 years old, mm -hmm. um, there's nothing you can do. You have very, very nothing. little rights as it relates nothing. to Nothing. You can clearly concern. see that your child or your relative, your sister, your brother, whomever it may be, needs additional help and support. Mm -hmm. But if it wasn't put in place during the IEP, the transition process, which is why I'm so heavily focused on the IEP and transition planning, mm -hmm. um, so that parents can start preparing early, as early as age 14, not junior year, not senior year. Mm -hmm. Let's start looking at it during the middle school years about what the plans are after high school. Right. So it's, so what you're suggesting is that as soon as a child or a, a young adult is diagnosed with being uh, developmentally disabled, mm -hmm. uh, then the IEP or the individual educational plan needs to kick in at that moment. Well, it well it automatically kicks in at that moment um, mm -hmm. once that child has been assessed. But mm -hmm. we're talking about a step further, which is the adult transition planning. Um, okay. From K through eight, it's just pretty much the developmental levels, the goal setting for their math reading, those different type of areas, if they have a speech impairment or anything of that nature. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about what needs to happen once that child becomes a young adult, a teen. Mm -hmm. Once they reach... 14, 15, that's when the transition planning starts. But the actual IEP starts the moment that child has been diagnosed mm -hmm. with a special need. Mm -hmm. So the IEP jumps in. But the key is, is the IEP a strong, meaningful IEP? Does it really speak to the unique needs of that child? So that's mm -hmm. where I step in as well. A lot of times the, uh, these IEPs are not really beneficial to that child I it's just put in place for protection for the school but it's not helping the child I w and i would imagine that one of the difficulties has to be with having uh created culturally sensitive yes ieps absolutely yeah. absolutely i would imagine that's a difficulty and can be a difficulty as if pe persons in the school system uh, who who don't who do not look like or do not have uh, the same approximate experiences as the persons and that also they are the generational in. gap as well because that my mm -hmm. grandmother raised us she didn't really know what to do next mm -hmm. you know and that is a barrier as well mm -hmm. you know um, people are not um, as in tuned or aware of the resources that uh, that are available if they are a part of a certain zip code let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're not in a certain zip code, then it's certain things that you're not privy to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a disadvantage. Okay, so let me be, so what we were talking about, you were saying black folks don't have the same information that Absolutely. other folks have. <laughs> right. Okay. All and right. that's why we're in this situation now with my okay. sister. I mean, she's still All back right. and forth on the street. All right, so this is the movement. We put it down. <laughs> you, we just say it. All right. That's right. All right. This <laughs> black talk the hard way. Okay, well, I'll, okay. I'll keep it completely <laughs> bring, bring, bring it hard. authentic 100, okay? All right. When we come back on the other side of the break, I'm going to continue with my sister, Angela West Brown, uh, who is a IEP life coach and consultant. The name of her business is ARWB, Brown. and that stands for? <laughs> ARW Brown, that's my name, uh, Educational Coaching Services. Okay, when yes. we come back, we're going to continue with our conversation. My name is Slaughter.
And uh, I need for my people who are standing by to hold on. I'm coming at you. Remember, you're valuable, you're important, and you are loved. News and Talk, 1380, W-A-O-K. Oh, my goodness. On the wheels of steel is Yolanda Dupree. Down with the movement family. That's some old school LaBelle, and that's grimy. Sus, I didn't know you had it in you. Man, when you get on them wheels of steel, it's something else, man. 404-892-2703 is the number. I feel that. That's all right. That's, that's, I think they call that soul music right there because that hit me right in the heart. 404-892-2703. You are valuable. You are important. You are loved. And you my sister. And you my brother. And uh, we don't need anybody else to validate us. We validate ourselves. We don't need nobody else's love. We love ourselves, and we build up ourselves, and that's what we're about today. It's a Fantasy Friday, but it's a special healing edition uh, of the movement. In the studio with me, Angela West Brown, who is an IEP life coach and consultant, and um, you were talking about, we were talking about uh, when we headed toward the break, the individualized education plan. Uh, tell us about how many people um, actually have or, or families or, or, or children suffer with developmental disabilities uh, in our community or worldwide. Worldwide, or, uh, over 6.5 million. 6.5 in this country. Yes. That, that is, that's significant. Mm -hmm. so how, seen uh, and unseen because every, disabil every disability is not seen. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I've, I've, I've uh, had... You know, I I do uh, you know counseling and, and therapy with 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 people, and uh, I had a client that has two daughters that are developmentally disabled. Okay. But when you look at them, there is no that you know there is no indication when you look at these young ladies. Absolutely. Uh, but but when you get down to uh, the decision making. I, oh God, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, the decision making is impaired. Mm -hmm. Right. And so how is it that you work with these persons and their families to help them develop different kinds of decision making skills? So basically, um, that's one of the things that I focus on, because mm -hmm. a lot of the teens with special needs, intellectual dis disabilities or developmental disabilities, mm -hmm. they are not able to determine a threat to their safety. Mm -hmm. They consider everyone their friend. Mm -hmm. So that makes them vulnerable right. to being taken advantage of. Right. So I try to teach the parents to know how to interpret situations, like do kind of this role play simulation type thing of this is what you do in this situation. It's mm -hmm. not the regular uh, uh, danger. What is that? Um, uh, stranger, well, stranger danger, danger. Mm -hmm. it, it goes beyond stranger danger when mm -hmm. someone has a de developmental disability or mm -hmm. an intellectual disability. Mm -hmm. And those are um, different strategies that have to be put in place to help that parent. So I'm pretty much connecting that parent to classes and workshops that can help them mm -hmm. learn how to teach their child, how to distinguish between uh, a good, good threat I mean, a good um, person and a bad person, or any mm -hmm. type of threat that mean that may be um, to their safety, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's it's a touchy subject because it's something that we take for granted that we just normally know how to do. Mm -hmm. You you can feel that um, instinctive intuition that may tell you, okay, this situation isn't safe. Mm -hmm. This person is giving me a bad feeling or a bad vibe. Mm -hmm. But someone such as my sister, they 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 know no stranger. Mm -hmm. They see no danger. It's mm -hmm. everyone that smiles at them is their friend, and mm -hmm. that is so dangerous. Yeah, in, in this day and time particularly, no doubt. So 
uh, you talk about the the differences, uh, the disparities, and the overlap between what's available from a federal perspective and what's oh, available yes. from a state perspective. Hmm. Uh, say more about that. Okay, so there is a major gap in communication with the federal level and mm -hmm. the state level. Mm -hmm. So like I was stating before, a lot of parents, especially um, older parents, they may be grandparents raising their grandchildren, or even parents, they may not know. Um, even though it's been 10 years, a, a lot hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. um, you have to go into the Department of Family and Children's Services and apply for Katie Beckett, a comp now waiver, um, you have to have your child registered as disabled at a state level. The mm -hmm. You would think, okay, federal trumps all of this, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. That's only half the battle. Mm -hmm. uh, you just hit on something. I would imagine that it is a difficult step to take to have one's child to be classified as, oh, yes. as intellectually or, or developmentally disabled. Uh, you know, because of the stigma yes. attached to mm -hmm. that designation, how how do you help people work through through that initial fear? Well, it's kind of this hand in hand type thing, right? Mm -hmm. So now we're seeing an increase in celebrities coming out and you know letting people know I have a brother or a sister with a disability, but that wasn't the case before. So I think that. Before I could even come in and coach the parents about handling and coming to terms with their child, um, the climate had to change. And the climate changed once celebrities started saying, hey, you know, I'm not ashamed of my sister. This is my sister with Down syndrome. I'm not ashamed of my brother. My brother has intellectual disabilities. And then, you know, everybody follows what they see others do in, in the celebrity world. But even with uh, with all of that being said and that happening, you still have some parents that may feel like I failed my child some kind of way or mm -hmm. I let my child down or people will judge me because I have mm -hmm. a child with a disability. And right. so I try to help them transition and come to terms with those feelings and let them know, like, your child is still unique and blessed and you are blessed to have yes. this child. Yes. This child is a star baby, okay? Yes. This child is destined for greatness. Yes. This child, you have to just figure out what that child's strengths are. Mm -hmm. The child may not have the same abilities as the next child, but that child has a superpower. That's okay. what I call it. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. And you just have to tap into it. Now, if you just constantly like we're going back to the IEP, if you're looking at the present levels of performance, and all they keep harping on is what your child can't do, mm -hmm. what your child haven't mastered. Mm -hmm. They're going to feel like, oh, my God, can I do anything right? Even though they may not be able to verbally say it, mm -hmm. you can still, you know your baby. You right. can tell You can tell when their energy is off. You can tell when they're feeling some type of self-doubt or just feeling, you know, you can feel energy in the room. Inadequate and inferior because, I mean, not only do they have to deal with the presence of developmental disability or intellectual disability, but you still got to deal with racism, white supremacy that's piled on, on top, top of that. On top of that. Yeah. On top of that. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, it's layer on top of layer, but my job is to help you remove the layers. Mm -hmm. Okay? I have mm -hmm. to first help the parents see what it is in them that's holding them back from mm -hmm. loving their child and having this fierceness. And I'm not saying all my parents feel that way. Mm -hmm. Some may say it, some may not, but at the same time, the parent has to still come to terms with their internal work, their mm -hmm. internal, you know, um, self-talk, negative self-talk towards having a child with a developmental disability. So you coaching not just the children, you right. coaching the, the parents. Parent because they need it first, and then right. it'll spill over into the child. That love right. has to start with the parent first, mm -hmm. and then it'll spill over into those babies. Okay. The name of the book is Lost and Found, Educating Parents of intellectually disabled high school students on how to navigate through college, adulthood, and beyond. How can people get the book? Well, it's on Amazon. It's mm -hmm. on Barnes & Noble. And it's mm -hmm. on my website, www.angelawestbrown.com. Okay. And do you uh, do you have workshops? Do you do workshops? Or I do monthly um, webinars okay. um, on adult transition planning. Okay. Um, how, can how can people tune into your webinars? Well, mm -hmm. they're live on my Facebook page. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. ARW Brown ECCS1. Okay. 
All right, then, and uh, if you will, give people your social media information, how they can get everything associated with a aura. <laughs> w, what's, the, what's the aura for? That's my middle name. Oh, okay, A R W B. How can they get the information to get in contact with you to make sure that they get this? Well, information? everything is on my website, okay. www.angelawestbrown.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers. Put your hands together for my dear sister, Angela West Brown. And Thank if you you're a parent, me. if you're a parent of an intellectually disabled high school student, you want to reach out to her through www.angelawestbrown.com. That's right. That's right. Shucks, it don't get no Simple. slip. It don't get no easy. Yes. There you go. <laughs> sister, you did an excellent job. You're talking about, I don't know. I don't know that radio. You did a great job on your first interview. All right, Woo. and you're welcome to come back to the movement. Thank you. You're welcome to come back anytime. All right. Thank you. All right, sister. 404-829-227-03 is the number. I'm your brother. I'll be black when I get back to the movement. 